Hi guys, welcome to this session on time management. In this module, I want to have a look at the time management matrix, which you can see on the screen at the moment. What you've got is basically four boxes or four quarters or segments, whatever you want to call them. Across the top, you've got urgent and not urgent. And then down the side, you've got important and not important. And then within each of these segments, you've got some activities so first of all urgent and important tasks are things like crisis a quick crisis something's really really pressing just happened pressing problems or any deadline driven projects that are coming close to their deadlines the next segment quadrant two is not urgent but just as e equally important but not urgent these activities uh, prevention, planning, training. So you're planning for an event, you're training for an event. So when it comes, you don't get yourself into this crisis mode. New opportunities, recreation, relationship building. So you're building and putting money in the bank with colleagues so that if you do need to ask their help, they're there and willing to and able to help you. Quadrant three is urgent, still urgent, but it's not important. So these are interruptions, emails, telephone calls, so things that distract you from what you should be doing. And usually it's somebody else's work. Sometimes you get people asking you to do something for them as a favor. So you stop doing what you were doing, planning and training and start doing their work. So it's important for them, not for you. It's urgent for them, not for you. So you shouldn't really be doing it, but a lot of people get themselves sucked into that quadrant. And then the last one is the worst one of all. It's not urgent and not important so this is just trivia busy working on something checking junk mails faffing about with your desk and tables things that you really want to do rather than what you should be doing this can happen to people that have been working in the company for a long period of time i've set themselves up with a non-job their job isn't actually a job but they pretend it is and they look really busy quite often talking to the people walking around with a clipboard looking like they're doing things but actually if you put them down and told them to put everything down on paper, what they were doing, you'd find they're doing very little indeed. Now, if I just quickly go on to the next slide and see a bit more detail about that. So, as it says there, everyone at some time does get into quadrant one, stress city, can't help it. We can't control fastballs, like at the moment with a pandemic, nobody would have predicted that in their forward plans last year. So, you will at some times get in there. So this is the sort of thing, crisis on our hands, we all have to muck in. The pandemic is even more of a, a, a better example. The deadline's moved, so we've got to work this week. And you should have planned, that's a terrible thing to say, you should have planned for this. But the ideal is, is if you plan for things, you don't get yourself stressed out in these quadrants. But what happens if you do get yourself working in stress city all the time, and this does happen in companies, you get burnout, people just switch off, they're not at their best, and they go on the sick for stress. Next one, quadrant two, so this is where we should all be trying to work, because you are building relationships, you're planning for stuff, you're training for stuff, a bit like the military plans constantly and trains for events that probably will never happen, but if they do and when they do, they're able to react, and uh, because they've built up team relationships, they react as a team. So they can deal with almost anything. People that manage to work in quadrant two fall into two categories. They are vision, they're looking forward, and they are balanced usually, not getting themselves stressed out, know when to say no and things like that. And they are disciplined and will back things off or back things away that aren't relevant to them. Quadrant three is urgent but not important. So this is where people are doing things that they want to do. Like people have been promoted from a job that they were really good at and now they shouldn't be doing that job. Somebody else is doing that job and that person comes to them and asks for advice. But instead of giving the advice, they end up doing the job. So they're no longer doing their job, they're doing somebody else's job. Easily distracted or, or want to be distracted. Pick up jobs that should, others should do and go to meetings that have no, that is the worst thing on the planet when you turn up to a meeting you've got no input you just sit there and listen they all seem busy doing something but something somebody else should be doing they are probably 
when you when you look at these people, you probably they're, they're really well liked in the company. They're really thought of highly, but quite often, uh, if you actually analyse what they're doing, they're not very productive. And that's the worst thing on the planet is when they complain that they've got too much work to do, and most of it is not even their work. Uh, their own work does suffer. That's where, as one of these modules I'll go through is goals and targets. That's where goals and targets tend to um, catch these people out because if they've got their own goals, they have to achieve those goals and targets. And if they're working on other people's stuff, it's a bit more difficult to do that. Quadrant four, these are the worst people on the planet. These, these people are constantly doing their own thing. Again, they're looking busy and they may have created themselves a non-job. A goals and targets would tie them down as well. So people working in quadrant one, stress, quadrant two, planning, training, quadrant three, doing other people's work, complaining, quadrant four, not really doing any job. They're just wandering around doing bits and bobs. So they have low product productivity. They're always dependent on others doing their own work, dragging people from into quadrant three. And they're disliked usually quite, that's quite a hard word, I suppose. Um, so this is what we should be. That was meant to be. If I just back up a bit there, actually. Uh, it's not going to play. Okay, so this is a sort of breakdown that you would um, probably want to look at creating. You can't avoid getting into there. Stress city, happy teddy bear. Don't want to really be in there very much, but we all do get distracted. Let's go for a cup of tea and a chat and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes that's needed for interpersonal skills and stuff like that. And nobody should really be in quadrant uh, four. So the ideal balance is, as it said in that little graph there, 20% of the time, uh, no more than 20% of the time in quadrant one and 60% of the time in quadrant two. Keep quadrant three and four to a minimum, but they will occur, like I said, and do work that you're employed to do, not what you want to do, which is difficult. And don't do other people's work at the expense of your own, even if they bully you into doing, and that tends to happen as well. People bully other people to do work that they should be doing. So this is just another breakdown of that graph where you should try to uh, work. So the yellow area is where you need to be the most quadrant one. Quad one and two is where you should be flicking between. Quad three maybe to get yourself distracted um, listening to other people and doing other tea breaks and stuff. Quad four, nobody should work in there. So to summarise, if you plan and your time and your work, training, planning, that's quadrant two stuff, you will not be stressed out because you won't get sucked into quadrant one stuff. And if you do get sucked into quadrant one stuff, you will have been trained and you will have planned for it so it shouldn't be as stressful. And make sure you're doing your work. So this is quadrant three. You don't want to be in there. And that's it. That's it. The end of this session. So if you've got any comments about this time management matrix, put them in below and I'll try and answer them. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for your time.